Hello everyone, Beastie here. I'm back with another video. Uh, recently someone on my stream asked me what upgrade should they be prioritizing in certain matchups? How do they know what upgrade they should be going for? And I'm not talking about the upgrades like Stim or Combat Shield. I'm talking about the upgrades um, for attack upgrades and also the armor upgrades as well. I won't only be discussing Protoss or Terran, I'll be discussing all three races upgrades in each individual matchups, which one you should be prioritizing, when should you go for double, Evolution Chamber, one Engineering Bay, two Forges, and so on and so forth. And I'll also be showing you guys some breakpoints that are very very important in certain matchups. Uh, obviously I won't cover every single unit's breakpoint break against every single unit because that's way too many combinations. But one of the examples that I'll be showing you guys is Zealot with no weapon upgrades, three shots of Zergling, but Zealot with plus one weapons, two shots of Zergling, which obviously makes a huge, huge difference. So let's just get into it. Okay, guys, before we get started, first thing I want to mention is one thing that some people still are confusing and don't know. When you get the armor upgrades on your Protoss unit, uh, Protoss units, whether it's ground armor upgrades or air uh, upgrades for the armor, they only affect the health part of the unit itself. So if you get armor upgrade, they will not affect the shield part. On the other side, if you get shield upgrades in your forge, they will be affecting your buildings, uh, air units, and crown units, but only for the shield part. So if you have plus three shields, they will reduce three damage per shot on the shield part, and then once you lose all the shields, they will have no effect whatsoever. So that's something to take note. And to remember now what upgrades do you go in Protoss versus Protoss which is the first matchup we will be discussing uh, majority of the players and by majority pretty much everyone will only go for one forge in PvP uh, you want to focus on your attack upgrades and the reason for that is your units as a Protoss race in general uh, they attack very slow compared to the other two races but their attack damage is much much higher so that you have a situation where a unit has 50 damage, if you get plus one weapons, it won't increase the damage by one, like it would do on marines, it would increase the damage by six or seven. So if you look at it from the other point of view, if you get, uh, you know, plus one weapons, let's say from 50 damage to 55, and your opponent gets plus one armor for his units, you can see that he will not actually reduce almost any damage to that unit. Uh, this is why players will focus on the one forge and going full-on attack upgrades first uh, until they finish plus three upgrades. And like I said, most of the Protoss units deal a high amount of damage, so the armor on the shield won't make a big difference. The most popular unit comps in PvP are uh, Charge Lot, Immortal Archon, and if you're playing uh, against maybe something like Blink Disruptors, which obviously armor will not help against Disruptors because the Purification Novas are a spell. Now. What upgrades do you get after uh, you have your plus three? This is something I always uh, get asked in my stream. If the if you finish your plus three weapons and the game is still in very much ground state, and what I mean by that, you're both still massing uh, ground units and you're still fighting, there's no transitioning to air, I would suggest go for armor upgrades next. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, obviously Archons have only 10 health, so they will not be gaining any value from the armor upgrades. But most of your army will be consisting of Immortals and Zealots, which both have higher health than they do shields. So you will get more value with that. But on the other hand, if you're transitioning to air, you know, you're either transitioning to carriers or Tempest, you're both kind of taking a break and just going into more Stargates. Shield upgrades are better because you will get some value for them on the Zealots and Archons, obviously. Uh, or Zealots and Immortals, sorry, the all Archons will get a lot of value from the shield upgrades, but not only that, your incoming air units will also get the shield upgrades. So, which second upgrade you get depends on kind of where in the game you are at the moment. For air units for Protoss, you always want to be going for uh, attack upgrades, and the reasoning is pretty much the same. Uh, if you're making Tempests, uh, they have very very high amounts of damage so every time you get a weapon upgrade they will scale incredibly well and do quite a lot more damage now the same thing goes for carriers but one thing to note if you're fighting carrier against carrier it's very very important to have two cybernetic scores 
because interceptors from the carrier shoot very fast. There's eight of them. So because they shoot fast, kind of like Marines or Zerglings, having armor upgrades against them uh, is incredibly important as well as shield upgrades. So that's something you want to remember. And the only example I have in this matchup where there's a breakpoint for certain units um, is Phoenix versus Phoenix. So basically on the right side, we have a Phoenix with no weapon upgrades. On the left side, we have Phoenix with plus two weapon upgrades. So one thing I want to mention before I show you guys this mini battle, uh, Phoenix with plus one weapons do not take less shots to kill another Phoenix. So unless you plan to go for plus two weapons, don't bother with plus one for the Phoenix because it will not make any difference whatsoever. Uh, Phoenix with uh, no upgrades take eight shots to kill another Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix with plus one still take eight shots. Phoenix with plus two weapon upgrades take seven shots. And then Phoenix with plus three weapons actually takes six shots to kill another Phoenix which uh, PvP has been revolving quite a lot about a lot uh, around Stargates uh, recently as well as going into multiple Stargates. So this is something that's very, very important and that's something that you should know. So again, we're gonna show the little fight. Both Phoenixes go in and the red one will win by uh, killing the blue one and still, as you can see, having 20 health left, which means that it took one less shot to defeat the blue one. Now, this is how I will be discussing every single matchup um, from Protoss point of view, Terran point of view, and Zerg point of view. I just kind of explained a little bit more detail for this one, but there will be more examples in the next one. So let's just uh, let's just jump to them straight away. And the next matchup I'll be talking about is Protoss versus Zerg from Protoss side. So uh, this matchup is pretty much same like uh, like PvP in a way, but not really, I'll explain. So uh, you never go for double forge in PvZ and the reason for that is it's very, like kind of like, um, it's very close how much you can afford in PV PvZ without dying to Hydra busts or to a lot of these Zerg all-ins. Um, so you might wonder, well, why don't Protoss players get armor upgrades? You're playing against Zerglings. Well. Uh, in Protoss vs. Zerg the, the, as a matchup, Zerglings don't actually do the damage uh, in mid to late game. It's more so uh, the Banelings and the Hydras that are kind of like the, the backbone and Zerglings are used more of as a harassment tool or just kind of uh, units to soak up the damage. Obviously they do get some shots, but because units are split between shields and armor, it's very hard to kind of pick one because they both are good in certain situations. But basically getting double forge early game in PvZ is, is just too greedy and just like in PvP, because your units have high attack damage, uh, you want to go for the weapon upgrades as fast as you possibly can so you can dish out as much, as, uh, as much damage as you can. Now, I got some uh, breakpoints for you guys that you can see how much impact they make in this specific matchup. I'll, I'll be showing you five different uh, examples. So first one, we have Zealot with no upgrades against Ling with no upgrades. If they fight, the Zealot takes three shots to kill the Zergling. But if your Zealot, on the other hand, has plus one weapon and now deals nine damage, if the, they fight, you can see that the Zealot two shots the Zergling. And this is obviously huge because not only takes one less shot, it, it goes from three to two, which is, you know, quite a lot faster. And if you're having, you know, big fights, um, like 10 Zealots versus 20 links with plus one or without uh, plus one upgrade, it will actually make a huge difference, um, no, which is like, I like I said, one of the reasons why you want to get those attack upgrades because PvZ is very, very focused on your Zealots and how strong your Zealots are. The charge lot run by is just the charge lot in your main army comp. Go for the weapon upgrades. The second thing I want to show you is how the weapon upgrades attack uh, affect Archon, sorry. So we here we have, we have an Archon with no weapon upgrades. So when he goes to fight against Queen, he takes one, two, three, four, five, six shots. But if you have plus one on your Archon, it takes one, two, three, four, five. So again, a big, big difference. 
Um, and another reason why I'm showing this is, well, Archons are also a huge part of your army in Protoss vs. Zerg meta right now, and uh, Archons interact with a lot of units uh, with their attack upgrades. Like I said, it would be too many to list every single attack upgrade and how it affects certain units, but I just pick these out as the most important ones. Another thing that I can show you is Archon with no weapon upgrades against Roach. It takes one, two, let's count together, three, four, five shots, but Archon with plus one weapons, which is not a big investment, takes four shots. So again, this is a huge, huge thing, and if you're defending a massive Roach push of like 50, 60 drones, and you have plus one Archons, well, they will make a huge difference in your army, which is why uh, you will see Protoss players, you know, use their Chrono Boost constantly into their forges because the the, the higher you go, plus two or plus three, you get more and more value out of them. But these are some early ones that have huge impact. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you in uh, PvZ is the Tempest versus Broodlords, which is another important interaction once you get to the late game. A lot of Protosses struggle with Broodlords. So, uh, Broodlords with no, no upgrades and Tempest with no upgrades, it takes one, two, three, four, five shots to kill. Now, if you get plus two weapons on your Tempest, it makes a big difference because it takes one less shot to kill. And you might wonder, why is this, you know, why is this even a big deal? It's just one less shot and they're huge units, you're not gonna have a lot of them. Well, that is exactly the point. Uh, you don't want to make 20 Tempest, for example, against Zerg. You want your main army to be focused on the ground, and when Brutalists show up, instead of having to build five Tempest, you can just build four, and then you can one-shot the, the Brutalords with four of your Tempests, or maybe you can even go up to five, so even if you lose one, um, the you will still be one-shotting Brutalords and kind of focus firing them and uh, preventing the Zerg from kind of overwhelming you and just swarming you. Now, another thing that I can show here is Archons with, I'm gonna make one Archon, Archons with plus two weapons against drones will one-shot them. So if you have plus one weapons against drones, you deal 39 damage against biological, but if you have plus two weapons, you deal 43, so you actually one-shot the drone which if you're doing some kind of like fancy Archon drops later on or maybe you do an Archon drop into the main base plus a war pin uh, you can pick off so so many drones with your Archons if the Zerg is uh, staying or if they're trying to run. So uh, yeah as the game goes um, after you finish your plus three weapon upgrades uh, my suggestion is pretty much the same, like, that's kind of like a rule for Protoss, I guess. Pretty much the same, like, against, uh, like, in PvP. If your army, and if the game is still very much into the kind of, um, you know, ground stage, you want to go for the armor upgrades. But this time, armor upgrades will actually be even better than in PvP, and the reason for that is you will be doing a lot of charge lot uh, run buys against the Zerg. So having, you know, eight Zealots warped in with suddenly plus two or plus three armor will actually make a huge, huge difference against Zerglings, which is something that Zerg will probably be defending your uh, charge lot run buys because they're super quick. They're not ideal, but they're super quick and they will get to these Zealots first. Uh, if you're transitioning into an air game again, if you're going to mass carrier or something like that, getting shield upgrades will get you more value in the long run. And Again, just like PvP, these matchups are, as you can see, very similar. Will get you a lot of value. Shield upgrades will get you a lot of value for the air units and also for your Archons. Um, the same rule applies for the weapon upgrades. It's actually not as important, uh, unlike PvP, to go for armor upgrades on your uh, Sky Protoss units. And the reason for that is uh, Zerg doesn't have any units that, deal, that attack super quick but deal low, low amount of damage. Uh, like interceptors versus interceptors. So getting air armor upgrades versus Zerg, not a big deal. Uh, you know, you can make an argument it's good against mutas, but if you have a fleet of carriers, no one's gonna make uh, mutas against them. So you do eventually wanna get armor upgrades, but weapon upgrades are prioritized heavily and you can go off of one cyber core and one forge throughout the whole game. Now, let's move into the next matchup. We'll be discussing PVT. So. Let's just jump into it.
this is the only uh, matchup from Protoss point of view that you want to be getting double forges, but not always. Uh, this depends what kind of playstyle are you going for. So if you're going for the standard uh, kind of like blink opener into triple nexus or stargate opener into triple nexus, you want to be going for a double forge. I actually made a guide about uh, a builder guide against uh, Terran recently that you can check out where I go for double forge. And the meta these days is the double forge in PVT off of fast three nexus. Now, if you suffer too much damage or maybe you're going for super fast Colossus base play into two base all in, or maybe you're doing some kind of, you know, two base charge lot all in, you want to go for one forge because double forge will only get value you know the longer the game goes and the more upgrades you get so if you only plan to get one or two upgrades stick to one forge uh, but if you're going for a longer game and if you're going for fast three nexus fast three base you will have a lot of economy so you can support those double forges now why do you get double forges compared to the previous two matchups well the weapon upgrade is exactly the same uh your units scale very well which i'm about to show you as well with some examples um again your units attack slow uh, they deal high damage so the attack upgrades will get very very good value but why do you get armor upgrades well even though zerg has fast attacking units like zerglings like i said they usually serve to tank and just kind of do run buys but in Protoss versus Terran, uh, you will be meeting Bio the most. And Bio, uh, Bio units are Marines and Marauders that are both ranged, that shoot very, very, very quickly with Stim. So they also have low damage. So Marines have six damage. So by getting one armor upgrade, you reduce damage by very, very big amounts uh, compared to PvP, where you know damage would go from 50 to 49. Now the damage goes from 6 to 5, which is a huge DPS decrease. Combined with Sentry, uh, Guardian Shields, you will half the damage that the Marines are doing. Um, so why get armor over shields? Well, um, Archons are used in PvT, but uh, most of the units in Protoss Terror matchup will be uh, more focused on the health and the armor will benefit benefit them uh, quite more so i would say no matter what you will always in pvt if you go double forge or if you go one forge into uh you know secondary upgrades after always go for attack upgrade first and then also armor upgrade next and only get shields once you're plus three on either armor or weapon upgrades you do want to get shields eventually because they will give you value like i said marines shoot fast so they will give you value no matter what and also as you're reaching late game um having shields and armor upgrades are incredibly important against units like battle cruisers or vikings that have two shots so uh the way that armor works when a unit shoots if it has two attacks both of the attacks will get their damage uh, reduction from the armor uh, at the unit that they're shooting at. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, units of scale great with uh, uh, weapon upgrades or colossus. They get a huge, huge DPS increase. So that's something to to pay attention to. Obviously, if you're getting you know a lot of disruptors, <clears throat> you can go and you're running off of one forge. You can go for something like armor first. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it, and that's why you go for those upgrades specifically in PvT. Uh, air upgrades, I would say that um, it would be the the perfect scenario would be to go double cyber core and double upgrade because you you need the armor on your carriers or tempest against both marines and battle cruisers and vikings. But if you can't afford it, stick to one cyber core as you're, you know, going into late game and go weapons first and then armor upgrades. Uh, there's also some exceptions where you can go for one forge builds into uh, like plus three armor before going into weapons. And the only uh, build like that I can think of is mass, mass charge lot high Templar storm rushing because the only thing you want is your zealots to tank so you can kill everything with the storm. But that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go for some examples so first thing i want to show you guys is the yeah, plus one out. adept uh Henry instead of three shotting here. scvs that was nerfed i think a year ago uh, adepts used to two shot scvs and then they nerfed it so that you need um three shots but plus nice one shot. adepts will two shot scvs 
which if you're doing any kind of adept focus gameplay it's super super important to get plus one weapons for them uh because uh if you do any kind of like war prism you know war pin uh you will get a lot of value out of them and be able to clean out the terran mineral lines much quicker uh, another thing Marines with no combat shield will also uh, get two shot by the Adepts, which is why if you're Terran, combat shields are super, super important. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is Adepts with plus one weapons will not two shot Marines with shields, but if the Marines with shields stim, they will go from 55 health to 45 health, and then Adepts will with plus one will two shot them again. I know there's there's a lot of numbers and a lot of plus two plus one but i hope you guys are uh, able to to keep track and keep up now next thing we shall serve uh immortal with plus two weapons if you're what playing against mech terrans which i think it might be a little bit more popular these days so if you have a siege tank uh and an immortal with plus two immortal with zero weapon upgrades or one weapon upgrade will kill siege tank in four shots but Immortal with plus two weapons uh, will three shot the siege tank. So again, if you're playing against any kind of, uh, you know, bio siege tank army comp, you can see how important this upgrade specifically is for the Immortals. And also if you're playing against mech, this is obviously huge and kind of, you know, part of the reason why you want to rush the weapon upgrades for your units. Uh, another example I wanted to show you guys, Dark Templars with plus two weapons actually one shot Marines. Now, this is if Marines have zero armor and combat shields as well. Uh, but if Marines would have one armor, you wouldn't be one-shotting them anymore. But then if Marines stim, they go down to 45 health, DTs do 55 damage, so you would one-shot. But good thing to note is, if you have DTs with plus three weapons, they will one-shot Marines no matter what. And, you know, to some of you, this might be like, why, you know, that doesn't really matter. You're never going to make DTs with plus three, right? Uh, there's some situations in the late game where it's very good to get blink for your Dark Templars. And if your opponent is not paying attention and you have plus three DTs, you can wipe out whole armies in literally seconds uh, with your DTs. So that's something to kind of pay attention to. The last thing that I want to mention in PvT is Tempest with no weapon upgrades. Uh, I think take five shots if I'm not mistaken to kill Vikings and this is something that's uh, very important for later stages in the game um, in, in PvT uh, when you're fighting like Sky Protoss against Sky Terran but Tempest with plus two weapons will be four shorting Vikings instead which again makes a huge difference kind of like what we talked about uh, versus the Brute Lords now uh, that is pretty much it. I think I've touched everything upon in PvT. These are some essential kind of numbers I wanted to to kind of show you guys. But overall, um, Double Forge, I think, in PvT is definitely definitely the way to go. Uh, now, let's. this is all for Protoss. Then we're going to move into Terran matchups and then Zerg ones after that. Let's do it. Okay, so now we're on to Terran. I'm actually going to discuss TVT and Terran versus Protoss uh, together because there's not a lot of examples as far as the units go. So I'll just kind of, you know, combine those two a little bit. So first thing first, uh, one example that I'll start with that I want to show you is Siege Tanks with no weapons take three shots to kill the Hellions, which is something that, you know, if you play mech versus mech TVT is important. And then on the bottom side you have siege tank with plus two weapons that will actually two shot hellions and make this uh, quite a quite a bigger deal now the reason why i'm not mentioning uh siege tank uh, upgrades versus bio is because there's a lot of splash involved there there's a lot of math and honestly i, I can't do that um so weapon upgrades in tvt um, or upgrades in general in TVT. So there's obviously two sides. There's bio and there's mech, which is different from all the other races and, and matchups. So first things first, I will be discussing bio versus bio. Um, there are two ways to go about it. If you play bio uh, two base all in, you want to go on one engineering bay, you will get plus one weapons into plus one armor. If you're going for a triple command center builds into the longer game, you want to get uh, double engineering bay in bio versus bio um, fights. 
Now, why do you get, uh, you know, plus one weapons? Why do you need two engineering bays? Uh, it's very simple. Uh, Marines shoot extremely, extremely fast. They're, I'm not, I'm not sure if they're highest DPS unit in the game, but probably they're top three highest DPS unit in the game uh, because they shoot very quick. They also have stim and their upgrades scale with their DPS quite well. So they start off with six damage and, you know, plus one weapons give them seven, plus two, eight and plus three nine damage per shot so it's very important if you're playing a longer game to go double engineering bay because you'll also be fighting marines right you'll be fighting marines uh versus marines and, and also some siege things added so uh you can do this yourself you can go into these kinds of test maps and and try 10 marines versus you know no upgrades versus 10 marines with upgrades and you will see the difference is enormous. Like it doesn't even compare. If you're behind one upgrade in TVT, whether that's armor or damage upgrade, you will lose the fight. Even if sometimes you have more units than your opponent, if his units, Marines are better upgraded, you will lose that fight. Uh, upgrades are extremely, extremely important in mirror matchups, but I feel like probably the most important um, in TVT by versus bio out of any mirror matchup because of it. So try to get those upgrades going. And the reason why you only go for one engineering bay in uh, TVT if you're two base all landing is because you will not have the time to, you know, get your armory and start other upgrades because if you don't manage to win with plus two, uh, uh, sorry, with two base all in with plus one weapons, plus one armor, you know, you're not going to be transitioning to longer games and you also won't have the money to enter two, two upgrades or three, three off of your two base economy. Now, bio versus bio, uh, as far as uh, siege tank weapons go, I always, always make sure to get uh, weapon upgrades for my siege tanks. Uh, the reason for that is not necessarily for the initial shot that deals 40 damage or 70 damage against armored, but the splash damage around it as well increases. So, um, you know, if you have big numbers of Marines running into siege tanks, the weapon upgrades will make a huge huge difference so that is pretty much a must um, so if you're going like three base versus three base make sure to keep upgrading those siege tanks don't slack and uh, they will they will kind of help you out in the long run uh, quite a lot and if your opponent doesn't have them and you have them they will make a huge huge difference now let's talk about bio versus mech uh, if you're the bio player um, I think the most important thing is I've had games where I actually ran off a of one engineering bay because armor upgrades are not that important if you're a bio player versus mech because mech is kind of like Protoss. Uh, they attack actually even slower but deal higher amounts of damage so getting that one armor will not help you a lot. It will help you, uh, it will help your workers not die to Hellions and Blue Flame Hellions but as far as the army itself goes, it will not make a huge difference. And uh, what I love to do if I'm bio player against mech is go for one engineering bay, get the weapon, get the armor upgrade, and then keep getting the weapon upgrades while at the same time slowly getting ship weapons for my air units because if you're a bio player, you do want to transition into a Viking Liberator or Battlecruiser eventually. So instead of running on double engineering bay, you can run on one engineering bay plus two armories or um, one engineering bay and maybe uh, just one armory but also just going for double engineering bay is fine it's not a mistake uh, it's just that the armor upgrade when facing mech is not that big of a deal but if perhaps you went to triple cc but you didn't really know what your opponent was doing and you started with double engineering bay you know don't stop upgrading just use it keep going with the double upgrades but if you know in advance i would stick to one uh, and the last thing is, let's talk uh, TVT from mech point of view. So, if you're a mech player playing in Zbio, uh, I would say that the uh, both weapon and armor upgrades are extremely important. The weapon upgrades, again, for obvious reasons, your siege tanks are the main core damage dealer in your army, and you want to make sure they're dishing out as much damage as possible. Also, weapon upgrades will make a big difference in... Uh, Hellions killing the enemy's workers, but not only that, uh, you will get a huge damage increase when uh, you're playing with Thors against uh, air 
units like liberators like vikings like battle cruisers and so on so you just get insane value and just 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 get weapon upgrades uh armor upgrades are something that i also do so when i do play mech against bio uh, i always get double armory uh the reason for that is well marines marauders they shoot pretty quick and uh getting the armor upgrades will help your army kind of counteract the weapon upgrades from the bio -tern. But not only that, it will also give your air units armor as well. So you kind of get double value because the game eventually will transition to maybe not full air armies, but somewhat, you know, heavy, heavy air armies. And you will already have the armor upgrades there. So the only thing you need to do after is get the air weapon upgrades. Uh, if you're playing mech versus mech, now there's a lot of debate uh, if you should go for double or one. I personally go for one. Uh, and just the reason for that is um, you won't see a lot of value uh, as far as the ground mech versus ground mech goes by getting the armor but if the game is transitioning to air battles or if your play style is specifically heavily controlled around air battles I do suggest going for two armories starting with weapon uh, uh, for ground and armor and then as you notice that the game is you know going towards air you can perhaps stop at plus two weapons for your ground units and start moving into ship weapons for your air units. Um, but usually the way I do it, like I said, is I do one armory. Sometimes if I notice the game will go into that direction, I will add the second one later on just to be able to get armor upgrades and ship weapons upgrade, ship weapon upgrades at the same time. Um, and that is pretty much it for TVT, um, I would say. Now, let's move into Terran versus Protoss. Now, I'm not going to discuss Mech versus Protoss a lot. Um, if, if you do plan to go for it, I would say go for Double Armory um, because of the, you know, eventual carriers and zealots and, you know, just go for weapon upgrades and armor upgrades. I won't be discussing it too much because not many people play Mech against Protoss. So let's just discuss Bio versus Protoss. Now, the first thing I want to show you guys is there, this is, in my opinion, probably the most important kind of uh, breaking point as far as the uh, upgrades and damage go. So Liberator with no weapon upgrades will take three shots to kill the Stalker, like you saw there. But Liberator with plus two weapons, on the other hand, will two shot Stalkers. And this makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, this is why I always, always focus on getting our air upgrades as soon as I have my armory done. Because, I mean, the difference between Liberator, you know, using three shots compared to, compared to just using two is huge because it allows your Liberator, instead of, you know, overkilling that Stalker, basically, I think this one was left with like 13 health or 12 health. So instead of Stay wasting, back. you know, another 70 damage onto the Stalker that's heavily damaged, you can, you know, shoot at the Zealot, shoot at another Stalker, and th the damage difference is actually extremely, extremely noticeable. Incoming so orders. the moment you get the armory, try to get plus two ship air weapons as soon as you can when you play Bio against Protoss. Now, um, if the games go into super late game in PvT you and, and you go into air armies, uh, one thing to note, armor upgrades for your mech units are super, super important if you're facing, uh, or not mech, but mech slash air units. If you're facing carriers, you will uh, diminish the carrier DPS by quite a lot if you have the armor on, uh, you know, battle cruisers or vikings or whatever you're going for, uh, as well as your, you know, ground mechanical units, whether they're, you know, medevacs or uh, wood of mines and so on and so forth. Now, uh, in PvT, PvT is, like I said, it's very similar to TVT as far as the upgrades go uh, for, for Bio. So again, if you're going for some kind of heavy two-base build, which is really, really popular in, in PvT for a while now, actually, for like past, I don't know how many years, uh, you want to go for one engineering bay, always go for weapon upgrades first, no matter what, uh, because your units are ranged, and like I said, they give and they get a huge DPS increase from getting the weapon upgrades. Um, so if you're doing some kind of two base solo and start with weapon upgrades, move into armor, and that's pretty much where you kind of stop and try to win the game. Uh, if you manage to perhaps kill a Protoss third base, you can add an armory and keep your upgrades going. But pretty much if you don't do some kind of game ending or, you know, to equalize the game kind of damage, 
Um, there's no point getting two armor rings if you're only on two base. But on the other hand, uh, if you're going for a longer macro game, definitely get double engineering base because um, you will need the armor upgrade as well. Uh, the reason for that is you have a huge amount of units, um, you know, just number number wise. So the general rule in StarCraft is, you know, kind of like the more units you have, kind of you'll get more value from the upgrades themselves, especially the armor ones. Um, so, for example, uh, one of the one of the units you definitely want to have armor against is Zealots. Zealots strike twice. So if Zealots, I think Zealots deal 8 damage per shot, so it's 16 when they hit. So if you have an armor upgrade on your Marines, they won't be doing 16, they will be doing 14 because they have two, uh, two strikes, so you'll reduce 1 damage from each strike. Uh, so it would be 7 plus 7 instead of 8 plus 8 for the, for the Zealots. So go double engineering bay, keep those upgrades going, make sure to get air weapons to get your liberators to plus two weapons, and this will also help you out quite a bit as you're transitioning into battle cruisers or if you're making Vikings against uh, stuff like Colossus or Tempest or whatever you know air unit Protoss can do and whatever unit you decide to go for. Um, I think that's pretty much it for TVT and uh, TVP. Next one, we'll be moving into Terran versus Zerg. There's quite a few examples there that I'll be talking about, and then we'll move into the Zerg matchups. Terran versus Zerg, obviously there's two matchups again, Mech and uh, Bio. First, we'll talk about Mech. Um, so there's recently, you know, Battle Mech is, is a thing again, and if you're playing Battle Mech, which you can check out on my YouTube channel, I did guides on that for every single matchup and also did a playthrough series. I always go for the armor upgrades, and then later on when I get plus two armor, I tend to move into ship weapons for your air units. If you're playing normal mech, I would suggest going for double armory uh, in Terran versus Zerg because again mech benefit greatly with your weapon upgrades and there are zerg units that you know shoot fast and deal loads amounts of low amounts of damage like zerglings or uh units like mutalisks if they're doing some kind of uh super fast transition and getting armor upgrades with mech will also help you against things like broodlings and eventually when the game transitions to kind of later stages air battles you will have that plus three armor already for your air units as well uh, as far as bio goes against Zerg, uh, it's it's pretty much the same like TVT bio versus bio. Uh, you want to get double engineering bay. Two base all ins against Zerg don't really exist. They're not really a, a you know a thing. So you will pretty much always go for double engineering bay into Terran versus Zerg uh, when you're playing bio and just make sure you get the weapon upgrades as well as the armor upgrades. Armor upgrades are super super important because. Uh, what zerg will be fighting uh with is uh usually zerglings sometimes roaches but um the armor upgrades and attack upgrades are obviously very very worth for bio units because you will be massing massing bio units you will have a lot of small skirmishes around the map and that's where kind of like i feel like the armor upgrades shine because armor will not help you that much against banelings specifically but if you're doing you know eight marine medevac drop into mid game and you have plus two armor and the zerglings only have plus one weapons uh then you can kind of feel that that big difference and you can trade a lot better and tvc at the end of the day when you play bio is a lot about trading uh with smaller number of units and that's kind of where the double engine bane shines so make sure to uh, get 3-3 as fast as you can once you get your upgrades rolling. Try not to skip any, and that's pretty much it. As far as the armory goes, uh, if you're playing uh, uh, Bio and Terran versus Zerg, it kind of depends what upgrades you go for, depending what army comp you're going for. So if you're going with Bio Siege Tank Thor or something like that, you obviously want to be getting weapon upgrades for your Siege Tanks um, and your Thors uh, off of one armory. But if you're playing a more popular style, I feel like these days, because the Widow Mines receive that buff when you have Drilling Claws, uh, they're permanently stealthed, so you need Detection as a Zerg to see them uh, once they shoot. 
Uh, a lot of players are going with double engineering bay one armory but they're getting the armor upgrades for the wooden mines which will also help you in the late game in the air battles but also give armor to your medevacs um that's pretty much uh how the how the upgrades work for Terran in all three matchups i'm going to show you guys some examples for tvz where they kind of hit uh the the breaking points for um certain damage uh units Again, Zerg, so uh, let's just take a look. So, for example, uh, plus one siege tanks um, will two shot roaches. This obviously makes a huge difference, and this is why this is like literally the prime example of why weapon upgrades are so important. Uh, you know, again, difference between two and three shots is, is quite huge in, in StarCraft 2, so make sure to get those upgrades for your siege tanks if you're making any, because they will make a big, big difference. Uh, now, on the other hand, we have a siege tank here with plus two weapons, and siege tanks with plus two weapons, uh, if you look here, will actually two-shot hydras. So siege tanks with plus one will not two-shot hydras, but siege tanks with plus two will be two-shotting hydras. So if you're playing mech against, you know, roach, mass roach, or roach hydra unit comps, having that plus two weapon will... Uh, help you quite a lot and will literally melt hydras um, I've had games where you know I had a lot of siege things and hydras attack and I lose them like oh, how did that happen and then I check my plus two was almost done and then in the next game similar attack happens but I have plus two and the zerg army just gets completely obliterated um, next thing I want to talk about is hellion with plus one weapons as you see here so just was plus one weapons, no blue flame, takes three shots to kill the uh, Zergling. But Hellion with just plus two weapons will take only two shots. So this is something uh, that's also really, really important. Uh, if you're playing battle mech specifically, um, a lot of Zergs counter battle mech with the Zergling, Baneling, Hydra. So this is kind of your point where your Hellions will shine. Now, one thing to mention uh, as far as Hellions against Zergling specifically goes, Plus two Hellions is exactly the same as if you just had plus zero Hellions with blue flame upgrades. So blue flame Hellions with no uh, weapon upgrades will also be two shotting Zerglings. So that's something to note and remember. If you're facing a huge number of uh, Zerglings and you're playing mech, it's better to rush out blue flame than rush out plus one weapons. Um, because, you know, it will be cheaper and also faster as well. Now, another thing to note is if you have blue flame and plus two on your mech, uh, mech units, hellbats will one-shot zerglings. So it will only take one shot to kill a cone of zerglings in, in front of the hellbat. So that's something that's kind of like makes your hellbats much, much, much stronger and you can trade so much better with zerglings to the point where zerg doesn't really want to engage into those kinds of fights because the zerglings get absolutely melted. Uh, on on this side, we have Thor with plus one weapon only, fighting against Muta with no upgrades. It will take three shots to kill this Muta. And this is kind of where Zergs try to switch to mass Muta before you get your plus two weapons. Uh, because it takes three shots and you can kind of trade uh, when you're fighting Mutas against Thor if you magic box. If you guys don't know what magic boxing is, it's where you place your Mutas over the Thors and not just attack onto the Thor because just attacking will make the uh, the Muta stack and then the Thor will splash but on the other hand if you have Thor with plus two weapons uh, it will only take two shots to kill the Mutas which obviously makes a huge difference uh, if you have two Thors you can literally one shot 30 Mutas if the Zerg stacks them so there you go another cute little breaking point for you guys um, the only race that we have left to talk about is the Zerg. Um, so let's just get into it. This has been the Protoss and the Terran. The Zerg is the only one left. Okay, guys, this is the last race, the last thing we'll be discussing in this video, which is Zerg and Zerg matchups. So we're going to start off with ZVZ. 
Um, this is a mirror matchup and the upgrades just like an air mirror matchup are extremely extremely important now There's two ways to play ZVZ. It's either with uh, Ling Bane kind of play style or just mass roaches into Hydras lurkers and so on and so forth now If you're playing Ling Bane Ling style, it's incredibly important to in my opinion go for double evolution chamber uh, the reason why you want to go for double evolution chamber is uh, next so obviously you want the attack upgrade so your zerglings can kill enemy zerglings or enemy roaches depending what kind of playstyle he's going for you can run by with links you can do a lot of damage and it will just get great great value because just like marines the zerglings attack very fast and deal low amounts of damage so the upgrades will scale very well with them now why would you get the second evo chamber the reason why you get the second evo chamber is plus one armor zerglings don't die to bailing shots they will remain on one health so if you're playing heavy zergling style and your opponent maybe is playing kind of defensive roaches with some banes even if your big clump of zerglings get hit by one baneling you won't lose all the zerglings so carapace is very very important and if you're also playing zergling baneling wars against the opponent plus one carapace will obviously have great value in just zerglings smashing and zerglings uh, fights now another reason why uh, armor upgrades on Zergus is very important is it can negate so that the roaches don't end up two shotting your zerglings with plus one slash plus two weapon upgrades um, so yeah just just keep upgrading if uh, from both evolution chambers if you're going for a zergling bailing heavy style which is not as common the more common one is definitely the mass roach play style and um, I've, I've seen pro players go for both. I've seen pro players in Roaches versus Roaches go for armor upgrades. I see, I, I or armor and uh, attack upgrades, sorry. I've seen pro players go for only attack upgrades. Um, it it kind of, I feel like, depends on the play style, what your general plan in the game is. But if you're going for, uh, kind of like with the other matchups, other races as well, if you're going for a longer game, I would definitely say go for double evolution chamber and get those upgrades uh, going. If you're scared that you might get all in, or if you're planning a huge kind of timing of like 50 drones with plus two or uh, 60 drone uh, plus two weapon, kind of all in with just mass roach or nothing else, one evolution chamber is probably the way to go. So I wanted to show you guys some examples of uh, the weapon upgrades and how they affect ZVZ. So first we have Baneling with plus two weapons will actually one shot drones. So if you're playing heavy Zergling Baneling style, uh, if you run in one Baneling into the middle line, you can cause so, so much damage uh, and completely obliterate the, uh, the opponent's middle line. Um, now, if you get plus two Bane plus two weapon attacks for your melee units as a Zerg, even if the opponent has plus one Carapace, aka armor, on the Zerglings, you will still be one-shotting the, the Zerglings, so that's something to, to remember. Now, we have plus one Roaches against Zerglings. Uh, roaches take three shots to kill the Zerglings, but if you have plus one weapon on them, they will only take two shots. And uh, obviously, if you're having a, you know a, a, a battle where you're massing roaches, the opponent is massing zerglings, this will make a huge, huge difference. Which is also why, if you're uh, the zergling heavy player, you want to have that carapace upgrade because that will negate uh, this from happening. Uh, the roach deals 18 damage with plus one. The zergling has 35 health. So if you get carapace. The Roach with two attacks will only deal 17 plus 17, which is 34. So again, the Roach will need three shots to kill your Zergling. So that's something to uh, consider when when you're playing uh, ZZ. Now, another thing that I can mention is same thing with Ravagers. Uh, let's see it finish morphing in. Oop. Ravagers also has exactly the same damage like Roach, 18, so it will only take two shots to kill one Zerbi. Now, this is something I wanted to show you guys, the importance of upgrades in Roach versus Roach battles. Uh, so we have a Roach with plus one and then Roach with no upgrades, and if you've ever watched any Pro Starcraft, you will see that ZVZ uh, players are extremely focused on the weapon upgrades with some of them going for the armor ones, but 
This blue roach, no weapon upgrades, the red one has plus one, and you'll see how the battle turns out. And now, if you take that into the real game, and then you multiply it by 50 roaches, you can see how that will have enormous impact in your games. And whenever someone has an upgrade lead, that is a huge, huge thing. Like, uh, you'll see, uh, you know, professional Zerg players, the moment when they hit plus one weapons, if they notice that the opponent doesn't have plus one weapons, they will go for it. Because it just gives you such a massive advantage that you should try and kind of make the make the most out of it while you have the upgrade lead going and that's why it's also very important to keep upgrading your roaches not only into plus two but plus three weapons as well so just get hive literally in order to get plus three if uh you only want to focus on massing roaches but most of the time you'll go be going into lurkers and you'll also get the faster lurker burrow which i'm not sure what it's called now um that is it for, for ZVZ pretty much as far as the ground upgrades go. You don't really see a lot of uh, air ZVZs going around. The only thing I can mention is if you're playing heavy Zergling Baneling playstyle, you will eventually probably be going into Mutalisks. And um, it's actually funny how that works out because uh, the Muta's attacks bounce. So the Glaive of the Muta bounces. It's not just a single attack. So getting the attack upgrade is... Uh, only working if I, I think this is how it works. I'm not 100% sure you guys can correct me, um, which I actually haven't thought about until now. But I think if you get a weapon upgrade for Muta, it only affects the first attack, and then each second bounce uh, doesn't get affected. So getting the armor upgrade in Muta versus Muta Wars is much better. So you want to go to plus two armor first if you're massing Muta against mass Muta, and then in, move into the weapon upgrades because there's obviously more bounces than the single attack to the Muta and you will reduce way, way more uh, damage by doing that. Now, let's move into Protoss or Zerg versus Protoss. So first things I want to show you some uh, examples here. We have uh, Worker, so just like in ZDZ, plus two Banelings will one-shot probes and this is obviously very, very big kind of breaking point uh, for your Banelings because uh, you can completely obliterate mineral lines, whether it's by just running in banelings or, um, you know, dropping banelings onto the mineral lines, which hasn't been popular for, for a little bit, but, you know, another option. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to mention is, uh, and this one is also very, very important because the normal game between Zerg and Protoss is... Uh, Link, Bane, Hydra versus Zealot, Immortal, Archon, and the Zealots are the ones in front. So you only need plus one weapons on your Banelings in order to kill the Zealots in four shots. So, it takes exactly four Banes. If you don't have that weapon upgrade, it takes five Bane shots to kill it. Now, what upgrades should you be going for in ZVP? I, I feel like this is the matchup with the most options. I've literally seen every kind of upgrade style. Uh, and I think it also depends on what kind of Zerg player you are and what units you are focusing on. So, for example, um, what a lot of pro players do uh, is go for uh, two Evo Chambers and they go for plus one melee uh, weapons and they also go for plus one um, ranged weapons. So they ignore the armor and the logic behind that is because your army is bailing Hydra, that's the kind of the, the damage dealers, and then the Zerglings are the ones tanking and uh, just DPSing wherever they can, basically. Um, you don't get the armor upgrades because the, the Banelings will chew through the Zealots, so then the armor upgrade won't be as beneficial against Immortals and, Archa and Archons and, and Storm, obviously, because it's a spell. So you go for a maximum amount of damage to wipe out the Zealots because the Zealots are the one that would be negated the most by your carrier base upgrades. Uh, and obviously the ranged weapons will increase the damage of your Hydras and your Lurkers or Roaches if you're going for Roaches, uh, Roach base playstyles. Now, if you're going for some kind of heavy Zerling Baneling playstyle where your army is, you know, no Hydras, maybe you even going to Muta, I definitely go suggest going with uh, carrier base upgrade it, obviously instead of uh, ranged because you will not be making any hydras but because your army will be extremely focused on um, zergling bailing i suggest going double evil chamber and getting melee weapons and the carapace as well and i've also seen play styles where 
they only do one evil chamber and uh, what they do is they kind of lead a more positional battle where they bust down with the banelings against the zealots and then they take lurkers to kind of take position and just kind of deny the protoss from entering that area and it's also less of a uh, greedy way to play the zerg i guess with only one evo chamber um my suggestion to you is uh since most zerg players or not most zerg players any player in starcraft tries to find a player and then emulate their play uh see what your favorite player is doing and if they're going for two bay for uh, two evo chambers and you want to do their kind of play style then do the same and uh if you're kind of you know developing your own style uh, of, of gameplay or unit comps I would suggest play with both uh, you know one or two evil chambers see what suits you better and just go on from there because there are more options than you know one or two uh, so you can kind of be a little more creative as far as that goes um, and that's pretty much it uh, when you're fighting against Sky Protoss, it's incredibly important to get armor upgrades for both your air units and your ground units because of carriers. Uh, carriers, like I said, interceptors uh, shoot very fast, deal low amounts of damage. So by getting armor, you will negate huge amounts of damage. And um, if Protoss player, you know, attacks into plus two armor Zerg with carriers, it will make a huge difference. So for example, if your play style is Zerg being Hydra, but then you notice they're going carriers, instead of maybe getting uh, melee upgrades, you can go for missile plus care piece upgrades in order to get your Hydras uh, more DPS and also give them the armor they need so they wouldn't just, you know, be straight up um, dying. Um, if you're going for any kind of Muta uh, based gameplay, or just a kind of overwhelming amount of corruptors in order to, uh, I don't know, pee on their buildings and transition into Broodlords. Um, I would suggest the attack upgrades on your air units. Don't think you need two Spires in uh, in PvZ or ZvZ um, for that matter. And that's pretty much it. One thing I want to mention is Broodlords and their upgrades. So a lot of people don't know this, but um, Broodlords, when you upgrade plus one weapons for Broodlords in the Spire, the only damage upgrade they get is when the initial Broodlord shot lands. So it deals a certain amount of damage and that's what you're um, upgrading when you upgrade into Spire. The Broodlings themselves, their damage counts from melee upgrades from Evolution Chamber. And this is another kind of uh, option that you have and what, what is your general play style in PvZ or any matchup for that matter. So if you're running two Evo Chambers in PvZ and if you want to move into Broodlords very quickly off of uh, Link Bane Hydra, maybe you don't want to go Lurkers at all, uh, you just want Hydras there to support and, and do range DPS, then I would suggest just going into double melee, uh, double Evo Chamber melee and carry base upgrades. And if you transition to fast Broodlords, that will also be buffing the Broodlings uh, with weapon upgrades for the for the melee units and also care base to make them a little bit more tanky. So just think about that the next time you play TVZ and kind of figure out what you want to do. Now, Zerg versus Terran. Um, I actually don't have any like breakpoints that are super important. Obviously, a certain amount of Banelings will you know take less shots to kill Marines. The reason why I didn't put any of those examples is because uh, ZDT is just mass amount of units. You know, you're never going to be like, oh, there's eight Marines, let me pull six Banelings to kill those. It's it's fights all the time, there's a lot of trading going on. So I, I felt like there wasn't any good example to show, oh, with this upgrade it's going to be better because of this and this is what you can use in your games. So uh, in general. Uh, ZVT, you will be running double EVO Chamber, I feel like, no matter what. Uh, if you're playing against Mech, I would suggest going for... Um, um, going for uh, attack upgrades on both your melee and ranged units. So if you're running uh, Zergling Hydra or um, Zergling Bane Hydra army against Mech, uh, you want to go for both attacks, not armor. If you're running pure Hydra army into Vipers, I would suggest going into, um, uh, what is it called? Um, 
Wow, brain fart. Ranged upgrades and armor. The thing is, armor will not help you too, too much against mech. And that's why you see that even when the pro players are only massing hydras, they still go for the melee upgrades as well alongside the range upgrades. And the reason for that is because eventually they will be going to broodlords and they want those broodlings to actually do damage against heavily, heavily upgraded uh, mech units. Now, if you're playing any kind of Roach Hydra base style, perhaps, Double Evo Chamber is also very important. Same thing with if you're playing Link Baneling into a Bio, you want to be going into a Double Evo Chamber. Uh, the reason for that is the same way that I've explained in TVZ, same reasoning in ZVT. Terran units, just like Zerg units, uh, they shoot very, very quickly and they deal low amount of damage and you will have a lot of small skirmishes on the map. So getting those upgrades, uh, the melee upgrades for the Zerglings and carry base for the Zerglings and the Banelings uh, as, as well, will have a huge impact, not only in the big battles, but in the small skirmishes when you're trying to defend uh, drops, uh, going into the later stages for your Broodlings, for your Ultralisks, it's incredibly important to have uh, armor upgrades as well as attack upgrades at the same time. Uh, I feel like TVZ slash ZVT, I guess, depending from what point of view you're looking at, is the matchup where upgrades probably matter the most. Um, that's not a mirror matchup. The mirror matchup is the uh, TVT one. I guess ZVZ also matters a lot for, uh, for mirror upgrades, but TVZ is the uh, kind of most focused on uh, non-mirror matchup as far as the upgrades go. Uh, because all the units, like I said, Bio versus uh, Link Bane, shoot very quickly. And um, they're just very, very important um, because because of those reasons. Now, Link Bane Hydra is something that's been more popular recent times, even when playing against Bio. I don't suggest uh, getting weapon upgrades for Hydras until you're fully maxed out on melee and carapace. Uh, the reason for that is your main damage dealers there are not Hydras, they are Banelings. Hydras are there as kind of like ranged support unit in a way um, you want to basically crash in with link bane while having hydra's dps from behind kill the medevacs kill the liberators the banshees uh the siege tanks whatever they can and then retreat without losing the the hydras the hydras will also not be dpsing the whole time you will not be fighting with the hydras the whole time while with zergling and baneling you will be doing run buys and doing those uh, mini skirmishes that uh i've been talking about and as you move into the late game, you will actually still be making Zergling Bane, you know, Broodlings Ultra, but not necessarily Hydras. Maybe you will replace the anti-air uh, ranged ability from the Hydra into Corruptors, so you won't get as much value by getting that ranged attack. But once you're 3-3, three, three, you, uh, you can go for it. Um, I think that is uh, pretty much it. Uh, what I had to say about Zerg, obviously Zerg is not my uh, not my most played race. I play Terran Protoss the most, so I have more knowledge in uh, those two. So, if you need more info about Zerg gameplay in general, I suggest just ask one of your uh, favorite streamers. Um, everyone in Starcraft community is really really helpful, and the streamers will probably try their best to answer your questions. Now. I think that is pretty much it with the video as well. Uh, if I missed any important kind of like breakpoints for, for damage in any matchup, please let me know in the comments below. I will make sure to uh, pin them to the top so people can see. Um, I will also post all these uh, breakpoints for as far as the damage goes, uh, either in description or in the comments of this video if you guys need it. All the examples that I've shown in this video. And I'm sure uh, that I've missed a lot of them. Like I said, I couldn't list every single interaction with upgrade and every single unit because that would literally be a 10 hour plus video. So I kind of handpicked the ones that I thought that have the most impact in the early to mid uh, and some of them late game as well. If you guys have any suggestions as far as this video or any other future video that you would like to see me talk about and discuss, let me know in the comments below. But for now, that it is, that is for me today. I am uh, dead tired, been recording this video for a very long time. Put in a lot of effort, so I hope you guys learned something from this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the support you've been giving me. I wish you a very nice and happy little day. And that's it. Have a good one, everyone. And I will see you tomorrow with yet another video.
Bye bye. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe and make sure to check out one of my previous videos. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching, have a very nice day, and I'll see you guys next time.